Hi friends, my name is Emily and this is The Self-Help Chef. I believe that food is the ultimate connection to all things mental, physical, and spiritual. This series is all about how to navigate important self-help topics while making delicious plant-based food. Food is the source of community, important discussion, family, and so much more. I encourage everyone to cook along with me and my guests while we talk candidly and openly about everything health and wellness. Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome to The Self-Help Chef. I'm very excited to introduce our guest today. She started as a woman in the corporate world, but now describes herself as a hungry woman inspired to create hashtag barbecue for all. This means plant-based gluten-free products designed to combine easy and enjoyable recipes to bring for barbecue at home. She's a founder of Pure Grit Barbecue and she's opening her new brick and mortar in 2022. I'm super honored to be working with her and to call her a friend of mine. It's Carrie Fitzmaurice. Hi. Thank Thanks. you so much for having or for coming here and cooking with us today. I am so excited to cook with you. I mean, we cook together all the time. All the time. But it's, it's exciting to now be Now in front of yeah. camera. And we're actually in your hometown. Well, not your hometown, but where you live right now, New York yes. City. So I'm so excited to be in a New York City kitchen cooking with you, talking about pure grit. And also another really important topic, we always combine um, self-help topics and plant-based cooking. So I thought it was perfect to talk about goal setting and all Love about it. how you've learned to set goals and what you've experienced in your career. Absolutely, I can't wait. It's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be great. All right, so we are making our famous plant-based impossible meatloaf today. Yes, we are. And so this is a fan favorite, um, something that you thought of and we yes. created and made really amazing together. Yes, we did. So it's kind of like a teamwork of a, a menu item. Yeah, and, it, and we've had two pop-ups um, mm -hmm. in Brooklyn and both, I would say, I mean, besides the beans, yeah. which we know is a crowd That's pleaser, a good... the impossible meatloaf was off the charts. I mean, oh we God. sold out so many times. It's... We were even shocked. How it's it's really delicious, and although we don't have a smoker here, it is equally as delicious. Yes, I promise. I made this for Thanksgiving, and omnivores and plant-based eaters Absolutely. completely devoured it. I agree. So <laughs> I'm really excited to be um, showing you guys how to make it. We're going to be showing you how to make it. We're going to be talking about goal setting. So we'll talk about all of our ingredients first that we have in front yes. of us. So in front of us, we have about. 14 ounces of impossible meat. Yes. Our veggies that Carrie, my sous chef, is gonna beautifully chop for us yeah. is um, the onion. So we have a yellow sweet onion. Um, if you have a larger onion, then I would say half of an onion, but since it's a smaller one, we're gonna use the whole one. And then we have a couple cloves of garlic. I love garlic. So, so do I. <laughs> good, so it's usually three, but we're gonna do four. This is or mushed up lentils. And this is a really awesome way to bind something. And then we have the famous pure grit <laughs> barbecue sauce and the famous pure grit hot sauce and as well as the pure grit barbecue rub. So this yes. is part of all of our sauces in our kits and we're using all of them in our meatloaf recipe today. Yes. And then we also have a uh, liquid smoke which is our hack to make it give that smoky and um, yeah so we're gonna get started. Uh, Carrie do you want to show us how you chop an onion. I know, I'm really unhappy with this because <laughs> I, um, so I was watching one of Emily's previous shows where she was showing how to cut an onion and I really felt very, can we say that on television, like cocky that I was like, I can totally do this. You can. And so I was, you know, so. So now you cut off this end. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I know that you flatten it so that mm -hmm. you don't get the. You flatten it. And then right? you still want to see the root. So we're going to take it, turn it root side up. And you can still see the root. So oh, then, that's the root? Yeah. So root, stem. Okay. Um, and then you still do this and then this, right? Yes. So there's three steps. First, you're going to cut it in half. Or you can see like well, the root. So cut the root in half. Okay. I'm gonna yes. Do this perfect. All the way to the end. All the way through. Okay. And then I'll help. We can both peel these skins off. You know what one of the things you taught me that I really like um, is the trash bowl. Oh, we love a trash bowl. I never oh, thought let's of get that. A trash bowl. And I was so annoyed. You know, I kept having to walk over to the <laughs> trash. About a trash. And then I was like, oh my gosh, of course. Why would you not do a trash bowl? Yeah. That is like. We're doing a trash bowl, but we're going to do a trash bread pan. So okay. put it in our trash bread pan. And then this way? Uh, yes, we're going to put the root to our left. So, or out facing outside, and yeah. then the stem is facing inside. And remember, it's the saw motion first. Oh, so, so you do this first. This is where we don't cut all the way through. 
and then keep your hand up so you don't, there you go. Yes, Carrie. So you'll have it here, Okay. and then we'll do slices. So okay. saw, slice. Okay, so and then, then turn it back where you started. Oh, okay, back where I started. And then just completely chop it up. Oh my gosh. Let's see how you did. It's perfect. We were talking about goal setting. What was your story of finding food and finding being passionate about plant-based food specifically? And what made you want to change your career? It's, I mean, those are so many layered and good questions. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, for me, um, can you cut this so I can talk? Because yes, I don't think I can. Course. I don't think I can cut and talk at the same time. Okay, Teamwork. so um, I stopped eating um, red meat and pork mm -hmm. when I was ten. So obviously, I started really teaching myself how to cook back then because mm -hmm. my mother had a rule. She said, "You know, you're one of four children in this house, and I'm not making special food for you. So if you want special food, you make special food." <laughs> I think I ate scrambled eggs and rice for Super 10 childhood. years. So um, I started thinking about food way back. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about implications and I just started thinking about a lot of things. And so it never really became anything other than something I did because I never thought of myself as a cook or somebody that could cook. And I never thought that I had a passion for cooking. Mm -hmm. It was always a means to an end and seemed complicated. Mm -hmm. And then what's amazing is I decided, um, you know, I, I've been in branding and marketing the latter half of my career. And I thought to myself, wow, like if, if vegan food or vegan fast casual brands were better branded, mm -hmm. could they be more accessible to more people? And the meaning behind that is why does it have to be called peace food or grass? Or, or fancy food, fa like your mom said. Yeah, yeah it's special just, food. And it just, it, it took on this thing that it, it was something for someone else and not for everyone. Yeah. And so it became important to me to say, okay, well, listen, let's come up with a brand. And I picked barbecue because for me, it felt like the most exclusive and I don't know, was this inapproachable, unapproachable, unapproachable mm -hmm. food genre yeah. um, that Very I could clicky. think of. Yeah, and I just felt like, wow, if I can make something that an omnivore would love, mm -hmm. a vegan would love, and everybody would feel welcome. Nobody would feel judged or out of place. Yeah. I was like, then I feel like that's a huge success. And so I started teaching myself how to cook. I took a vegan cooking class online. Mm -hmm. I started investigating vegan barbecue. I started investigating recipes. I bought a smoker. I started mm -hmm. practicing. And when I started three years ago, alternative proteins like Impossible and Beyond really weren't mass. Yeah. So I was doing tofu, tempeh, sweet potatoes. Um, we are doing beans. Yeah, baked beans, coleslaw, mm -hmm. you know. And then I um, I was trying to work on a biscuit or a cornbread, um, thinking through what this what the restaurant would look like. And that's when um, my our, our partner Jenny and I went to Vegan Dale, which is an amazing vegan festival oh, so here in fun. New York City. And the longest lines were waffles and fried chicken, mm -hmm. and obviously not fake fried chicken. And I thought to myself, you know what? Who doesn't love a waffle? Yeah. So we spent a lot of time perfecting our cornbread waffle. And you'll see that even here today, I tend to make them by the dozen and I freeze them <laughs> so that I can have them for breakfast or for dinner, yeah. savor your sweet. And so that kind of um, has just kind of led to this passion. And I think that's so interesting because I was listening to a podcast the other day about goal setting and different goals and behavior change and whatever. And somebody said it was Brene Brown. She was saying that. I love her. Oh, she's the best. She's the best. And she was saying that, um, as long as, exactly what you said, as long as you always are thinking about every day, what kind of person do I want to be? And what kind of change do I want to make in the world? It's easy to make those goals and to find your way and to find, you know, your journey. Mm -hmm. And I think it, that's, totally. you just ended up finding that you were very passionate about vegan food and you found that, oh, there's not a lot of options in barbecue. So, exactly. and then you found, I can be a restaurant owner and, that's, that and is, be fearless. And that's important. Everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. And you gotta have a goal. And so that's kind of um, when you're doing something you really love mm -hmm. and you really believe in, mm -hmm. it's so much easier. I yeah. know everybody says that, and you yeah. wanna punch people that say that <laughs> when they're just like, oh, if you find your life passion, you're yeah. gonna be blah, blah, blah. And I remember, you know, in Oprah, when she turned 50 or whatever, she would talk about that all the time. Yeah. And it really is true when, you, when you're like, it doesn't feel like work. At the time I came up with this idea, my partner was like, um, not Jenny, but Scott, our other mm -hmm. partner, um, was like, well, 
it, it, I, I was saying this system was broken, that barbecue's broken, it's not inclusive of mm -hmm. women, it's not inclusive of vegetarians or vegans, there's yeah. no options. And he said, well, stop complaining, do it. I love that. And I, I was that. like, oh, okay. And so I started this when I was, I, um, was, I had another job um, as the CMO of a company. Mm -hmm. So Jenny and I were working together there mm -hmm. and Jenny's our other partner. She's awesome. And we just kind of, I mean, I gotta tell you, we just kept digging away the branding. We work nights and weekends, nights and weekends. And it's like the, every little every little thing adds up to something major over mm -hmm. time. I mean, we've been working on this for nearly three years. Mm -hmm. We've had the products in the market uh, for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And we're looking to open our first location in beginning of 2022. If that's not a long journey, people will say, well, this came out of nowhere. No, yeah. it didn't. Yeah. And I would argue that most people that like came out of nowhere have been working on it. I mean, this is a three year passion yeah. project that is finally coming to fruition. And it, it really helped when, when we met Emily and we met and then all of a sudden it was like the missing piece. It all clicked together. It did. It did. Yeah, it did. So this is already, we put in our, uh, we put in a three quarter, we put cup. In three quarter cup of barbecue, barbecue sauce. sauce. We put in uh, four cloves of minced garlic. Did you do the rub? Uh, we are going to do the rub. Yeah. So about a tablespoon. And by the way, this rub, you're going to notice how fine it is. Mm -hmm. So this is my personal hack because I live for this thing, obviously. The rub <laughs> comes in like a pouch. But what I do is I put it in my um, Nutribullet. Oh, nice. And I blend like it. Like sugar. So it turns into like a yeah. fine powder. Okay, so this is holding together really nicely. And so we're just going to pat it down. Yeah. And then we'll put it in our oven. We have set to 375. And we'll, you can do it. Well, you can do 375, 400. Yeah. 400. And then we'll do it for 25 minutes, right? 25 minutes. We'll check it and, and then we're going to top it. Top it because this is our uh, famous thing about our meatloaf is that we're going to uh, mop some barbecue sauce on top. And so it's going to have like a really nice crust, just like you would see with like a brisket or mm -hmm. ribs or anything you'd see in a barbecue restaurant. So that's my favorite part because when you crunch into it. It's yeah. Like, oh my God. It's so caramelized and amazing. Yeah. And so, yeah. So we'll see you after 25 minutes. All right. So we got our meatloaf out of the oven. It's been about 25 minutes. Yeah. At, 400. At 400. Yep. And it's starting to get a little crusty and brown and it looks amazing. And you could definitely serve it like this but we're gonna do something that we do in the restaurants, which is we're gonna glaze over the top and give it that amazing barbecue right. crust. And so what we've done is just mix up uh, some of the barbecue sauce and some of the pure grit hot sauce. And so if you don't like spice, you don't have to exactly. use it, but I, we both like spice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drizzle some on, and this is about a quarter of a cup. So that's basically all we do, and then we're gonna put it in same and then you drained it before we did this. I did drain it. So because there's a lot of like the lentils and the meatloaf and everything produces a lot of moisture, um, I did have to drain it. But luckily the meatloaf is so dense that it won't fall if you drain it into the sink. So yeah. drain out that extra moisture and then we're going to coat it and then put it back in the oven for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And while I do that, we were talking off camera about a specific goal that you do every day that I always tell people when I'm talking about you. I'm like, she wakes up at 5 a.m. So just tell them tell them what this is and how you right. maintained it. Because it's it's not as crazy as it sounds, although it's, it's it is not, pretty crazy. No, okay, so there is this, um, a good friend of mine, uh, Laura Manis, she told me about this book. I, I It's called The 5 a.m. Club. And it's a book you read and it's, I guess, nonfiction, but it's fiction, you know what I mean? It's like nonfiction in fiction yeah. to make it more um, approachable. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just a story about your best potential and goal setting. Mm -hmm. And so what it is, is the premise is you take your first chunk of time from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. And it takes me longer. It's usually for me about like 5 to 6.30. Mm -hmm. And you do these 20 minute intervals. So the first 20 minutes is some sort of exercise. And it can be, sometimes I jump on the Peloton, sometimes I uh, do yoga mm -hmm. or I stretch or I do a weight workout, something for 20 minutes. And I set my timer. And then the next 20 minutes is supposed to be self-reflection. So what, mm -hmm. I have, what I've gotten into the habit of doing is I usually write in a journal for like five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I meditate for 
15 to 20 minutes. That's why I kind of take a little bit longer because yeah. I want I like doing both. Yeah. But you can easily do just one or the other. Mm -hmm. And then the last 20 minutes is learning something. And so what I tend to do is, and this is a lot how, how I taught myself to cook. Mm -hmm. I would have a cookbook. And so when my 20 minutes of learning came up, I mean, I'd, I read an entire book on spice. That's awesome. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. You do it every morning, 20 minutes adds up. Because if you look at minutes. this book, I'm like, I'm never going to read a book on spice. Mm -hmm. But if you're just like, you know what? It's only 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I, you can do anything for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then what I normally do is just sit, continue sitting at the dining room table and I'll kind of map out my day. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the whole idea is that you do the hardest things in your day in the beginning when your brain is more attuned. Because yeah. you know, by the end of the day, by three o'clock, forget it. Yeah. I'm worthless. <laughs> Nap time. I end up going into the kitchen because you can totally zone out and cook. Yeah. But it's this idea that you day stack and you, you build in free time, you build in fun time, you build in all of the fun, great things you want to do in your day. It made my day so much more controllable and mm -hmm. I felt so organized. Yeah. And we call it micro wins because it, it's like I never got daunted or freaked out because yeah. I just kind of was like, let's look at this hour. Uh, what I've figured out what helps me is I can get overwhelmed easily too because mm -hmm. I'm a, I've figured out from growing up, going to college and my career and whatever, I'm a very all or nothing thinker and that's something that I've had to unlearn. And so when I get into that habit of thinking like all of the things I have to do and like, oh my God, there's so much that, so many decisions I have to make and everything is a life and death decision or whatever and I get really down the rabbit hole, yeah. I just sit down and I make a to-do list and that's helped me so much because when I make a to-do list, I'm like, oh, there's not that much that exactly. I have to do exactly. and I can do it all in one day and then I can go enjoy and treat myself mm -hmm. and um, like nourish my soul and my mind yeah. and body and that's one thing that's really helped me. So. I've been starting to do that, and I have been working out every day, which is something that, that I have been really inspired by. I have to say, Emily, like, you know, I'm so impressed with, I mean, your generation in general, but also you in particular, is, you know, when I was 25, I, I don't know if I could possibly understand that I, there was an option beyond you go to school, mm -hmm. you go to graduate school, you get a job, you stay in that job, you get married and you know, I broke the mold in the sense that I was like, whoa, 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 I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But it was sort of like, your generation is so amazing that you're able to really think through what life and this means to you mm -hmm. and that you have the, the, uh, so many great opportunities and you're seizing them and, and making your own content and being like taking your fate in your own hand. I mean, it's so, it's so inspiring to see because I have the guts now at 52. I would have never had the guts at 25. Thank you know, you. I, I mean, it's incredible. But it, it's like you said, you have to have your support system. It's important to have your people. It is important to have believe your in you. Yeah, it's so true. So here are the Pure Grit waffles. They're gluten-free, yeah. they're amazing. They're vegan and gluten-free. Mm -hmm. And what's great about these is I made them over the weekend and froze them. And so mm -hmm. I just popped them, I took them out of the freezer and yeah. came over here and we just toasted them up. They're That's what's so well. nice when you make them in advance. Yeah. You can and eat them they have savory. a lot of integrity. Yeah. You can eat them uh, sweet. So today we're eating savory. So Carrie, if you want to slice, us, oh slice us off a piece. Even though it's just us eating it. Look at that. Oh. It looks like real meatloaf. Doesn't it? Because it is real meatloaf. It's just vegan. Yeah. And then if you want to see that caramelization on the other side, on that top right there, it looks like a freaking brisket or yeah. something. Woohoo! Alright, so here we are. Our pure grit meatloaf and pure grit waffles. And I feel like I'm gonna make a sandwich. Them. Yeah, I'm gonna make a sandwich too. I don't know, I was thinking yeah, about... Yeah, just little bites. Like this. Yeah, cute! Watch. You wanted me to drizzle some barbecue sauce? Yeah. Because you know, everything needs more barbecue everything sauce. Everything needs more, you can never have enough. Okay, ready? Yeah. Oh wait, I want to make one too. <laughs> Look how cute it is. It's so cute! Mini Sammy. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> 
น่าจะเป็นไปอืมโอเคเอ็กซ์ออลเลยสุดเลยอืมแล้วไม่เกิดทายเลยไม่เนี่ยนะไม่เกิดไปเยอะอืมเนี่ย Woo! You never will. It's so good. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Carrie. It was so much fun. And you guys check out Pure Grit and all of the amazing sauces. And look out for our uh, brick and mortar that's coming very, very soon. And remember, you are important. You are worthy. And we will see you at the next episode. Thank you. Good job. Good. Very good.